I want to take you along some scripture study. I want to read The Pearl of Great Price. And I figured I was just going to read it to you because that's what I'm feeling inspired to do this morning. Um, yesterday I said I was going to read The Pearl of Great Price and I just figured I would start reading it with you guys. So if you want to listen along, whether you're driving to work or at home cleaning the house, it's up to you. Okay, introduction. Now, there's only 61 pages in the Pearl of Great Price, so it's not that intense of reading. And I found as I was reading a few pages last night, it was pretty easy reading. So I'm going to start that with you guys. Introduction. The Pearl of Great Price is <clears throat> a selection of choice materials uh, touching many significant aspects of the faith and doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Those items were translated and produced by the prophet Joseph Smith, and most were published in the church um, of, its, uh, of his day. Okay, let me see. The first collection of materials carrying the title Pearl of Great Price was made in 1851 by Elder Franklin D. Richard, then a member of the Council of the Twelve and President of the British Mission. Did not know that. Its purpose was to make more readily accessible some important articles that had limited circulation in the time of Joseph Smith as church membership increased throughout Europe and America, there was a need to make these items available. The Pearl of Great Price received wide use and subsequently became a standard work of the church by action of the First Presidency and the General Conference in Salt Lake City October 10th, 1880. Several revisions have been made in the contents as uh, the needs of the church have required. In 1887, portions of the Book of Moses not contained in the first edition were added. In 1902, certain parts of the Pearl of Great Price that duplicated um, materials as published in the Doctrine and Covenants were obtained. That's, see, this is stuff I'm learning. I mean, even though I read this yesterday, I could just read it over and over. Um, arrangements into chapters and verses with footnotes was done in 1902. The first publication in double column page with index was in 1921. No other changes were made until April 1976. When two items were um, added in 1979, these two items were removed from the Pearl of Great Price and replaced in the Doctrine and Covenants, where they now appear as sections 137 and 138 in the present edition. Some changes have been made to bring the text into conformity with either with earlier doctrine. Following is a brief introduction to the present context. So it just basically goes over um, uh, the sections of the Book of Moses and extract from the Book of Genesis of Joseph Smith's translations of the Bible, which he began in June 1831. The Book of Abraham, an inspired translation of the writings of Abraham, Joseph Smith began the translations in 1835 after obtaining some Egyptian... Wow! The translations was published 
in the times and seasons began Mar beginning March 1st, 1842 at Nauvoo, Illinois. This is, let's see, Joseph Smith and um, from the testimony of Matthew in Joseph Smith's translations of the Bible, see Doctrine and Covenants 45, 60 through 61 for the divine um, in the beginning <clears throat> of the translations of the New Testament. Joseph Smith history from Joseph Smith official testimony and history which he and his uh, prepared in 1838 and 1839 in Nauvoo, Illinois, beginning on March 15th, 1842. Number five, the Articles of Faith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a statement by Joseph Smith published in the Times and Seasons, March 1st, 1842, in the company with a short history of the church that was popularly known as the um, Went Wentworth Letter. Okay, now we're in the beginning uh, sections from the Book of Moses. Uh, chapter 1, June 1830. God reveals himself to Moses. Moses is transfigured. He is confronted by Satan. Moses sees many inherited words, words without number where were created by the Son. God's work and glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. I gotta highlight that eternal life of man. So I got my little colored highlighters over here. Because I like that eternal life of man. Okay. So as you'll see, I am starting. I've already highlighted last night several things in here. And I'm going to um, elaborate on those as I get to them. The words of God, which he spoke unto Moses at the time when Moses was caught up into the um, high mountains, and he saw God face to face, and he talked with him, and the glory of God was upon Moses. Therefore, Moses could endure his presence. And God spoke unto Moses, in saying, Behold, I am the Lord God, almighty and endless in my name. For I am without beginning of day or end of year and is not this endless. So I highlighted, I am the Lord God Almighty. Of course, we have a street cleaner coming by <laughs> at 8 11 in the morning when I am reading scripture. So this ought to be interesting. I can hear this, and I'm going, hmm. Yeah, they're cleaning the streets. Holler. So if you live in Sandy, you can probably hear what I'm hearing. Um, so I highlighted, I am the Lord God Almighty and endless in my name. And then I highlighted in red, for I am without beginning of days or end of year. And in yellow, I wrote, and I highlighted, and is not this endless. Number four. And behold, thou art my son. Wherefore, look, and I will show the, the, weak, um, the workmanship of mine hands. But not all for my works are without end, and also my words, for they never cease. Now, I got to highlight, for they never ceased. Because I did highlight some other things in there. Um, for they never cease. So this is what I highlighted last night. Almighty. Oh, I am the Lord God. Uh, I 
talked about that already. Holler, um, oh, I was at number four. I highlighted on number four, thou art my son. Look, I will show the workmanship of mine hands. And I just highlighted it at the end of the verse, for they never cease. Number five, wherefore no man can behold all my works, except he behold all my glory, and no man can behold all my glory, and afterwards remain in the flesh on the earth. And I have a work for thee, Moses, my son, and thou art in, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> of mine only begotten, and my only begotten is and shall be the Savior, for he is full of grace and truth. Oh, I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight grace and truth. Flip the page. Grace and truth. Okay. Um, let's see. But there is no God beside me, and all things are present with me, for I know them all. Oh, holler. Let me get a different color in here, because got all my colors. I just love these. Gonna put this one in purple. Now, this particular um, reading, I have no rhyme. Normally, I color code it based on reason, but this I'm just doing it just to be catchy to the eye. So I want to write. I want to highlight. I know them all, which is God that knows them all. So I know them all. Okay, highlighted. And number seven. And now behold, this one thing I show unto thee, Moses, my son, for thou art in the world, and now I show it unto thee. And it came to pass that Moses looked and behold the world upon the world upon which he was created. And Moses, behold the world. And the end, therefore, and all the children of men, which are and which were created of the same in he greatly marveled and wondered. Now, I highlighted, that was uh, verse 8. This is what I highlighted. Therefore, all the children of men, which are, which were created of the same, he greatly marveled and wondered. That's was um <clears throat> okay, let's go to verse nine and see what um this is so much fun. It's not easy reading though when you're when you're when you're live and I'm waiting for that street cleaner to come by. <laughs> okay, number nine <clears throat> and the presence of God which drew from Moses that his glory was not upon Moses, and Moses was left unto himself. And as he was left unto himself, he fell unto the earth. And it came to pass that it was for the space of many hours before Moses did again receive his natural strength like unto man. And he said unto himself, Now for this cause I know that man is nothing which things I never had supported. Wow. Number 11. But let me grab this here. Number 11. I also had to get bigger script because my eyes. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Number 11, but now my own eyes have behold God, but not my natural, but my spiritual eyes. For my natural eyes could not even 
behold, for I should have with uh, and women um, and died in his presence, but his glory was upon me, and I behold his face, for I was transfigured before him. Now this is interesting. When I was reading this last night, I don't have any highlights for that section where verse 11 is. And I don't even remember reading this. So I'm going to make a little note here so that I know to go back to this because I want to research that further. I'm just going to make a little indentation. Okay. Number 12. And it came to pass that when Moses had said these words, behold, Satan came tempting him, saying, Moses, son of man, worship me. He's a sneaky little thing down there, isn't he? Don't you agree? Um, and it came to pass, it came to pass that Moses looked upon Satan and said, who art thou? For behold, I am the son of God. In the similitude of his only begotten, and where is thy glory that I should worship thee? So I made a little quote around verse 13 in orange, and I kind of wanted to, um, because that, that to me was powerful, that it just shows me how sneaky the adversary is when, when he wants to um, cause affliction or deception in our own life. 14, for behold, I could not look upon God except his glory should come upon me and I were transfigured, transfigured before him, but I can look upon the in the natural man. Is it not so? Blessed, blessed be the name of God, for his spirit has not altogether withdrawn from me, or else where is thy glory, for it is darkness unto me, and I can judge between thee and God. For God said unto me, Worship God, for him only shalt thou serve. Only God. Only God. And this is what I find with being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. I've been feeling the last few days that um, that so many people are are looking for a testimony in prophets and apostles within the church when you need to develop it with him. I have a strong testimony of God. Number sixteen. Get the okay. Satan deceives me not, for God said unto me, Thou after, thou art. After the assignment of mind only begotten, and <clears throat> and he also gave me gave me commandments which he called unto me out of the burning bush, bush, saying, "Call upon God in the name of my only begotten and worship me." Eighteen, and again Moses said. I will not um, cease to call upon God. I have other things to inquire of him for his glory has been upon me. Wherefore, I cannot judge between him and thee. Depart, hence say Satan. That's a powerful word when you say depart, Satan. I just love when, when they do that. Okay. Um, we had to do that more often when we feel, when we feel those effects of, of Satan present in our own lives. Is just say, depart, 
got no time for you. 19. And now when Moses had said these words, Satan cried with a loud voice and retained upon the earth and commanded saying, I am the only begotten, worship me. And it came to pass that Moses began to fear exceedingly. And as he began to fear, he saw the bitterness of hell. Nevertheless, calling upon God, he receiveth strength. And he commanded, saying, Depart from me, Satan, for this one God only will I worship which is the God of glory. So Moses knew this. And now Satan began to tremble and the earth shook and Moses received strength and called upon God saying, in the name of the only begotten, depart, hence Satan. Oh, this gets a highlight. Holler. So, and now Satan began to tremble. Oh, I like it when Satan trembles because he knows he's wrong. He knows he's wrong. Um, yes, Satan began to tremble. And the earth shook and Moses received the strength. That gets yellow. Moses received strength, called upon God, saying, I'm highlighting. In the name of the only begotten, depart. That's, I'm, that's what I'm highlighting. And it came to pass that Satan cried with a loud voice, with weeping and waiting. Oh, wow. Of the tea. Okay. And he departed. Hence, I love this. Hence, even from the presence of Moses, that he beheld, behold, beheld him not. 23, and now this thing Moses bore record, but because of the weakness, it is not, it, it is not had among the children of men. And it came to pass when Satan had departed from the presence of Moses, that Moses lifted up his eyes upon heaven, unto heaven, being filled with the glory, with the Holy Ghost, which bear a record of the Father and of the Son, and calling upon the name of God, he behold his glory again. For it was upon him, and he heard a voice saying, Blessed out thou art thou, Moses, for I am almighty, have chosen thee, and thou shalt be made strong than many waters, for thou, for they shall obey thy commandments, as if thou wert God. 26, and lo, I am with thee, even unto the end of the day, for thou shalt, shalt deliver my people from bondage, even Israel, my chosen. I'm gonna mark up 26 there. Okay, um, 27, and it came to pass as the voice was still speaking, Moses cast his eyes and behold the earth, even all of it. And they, <clears throat> there was not a particular of <clears throat> it, which he did not behold. Wow. By the spirit of God, 28. And he behold also the inherent, therefore, and there was not a soul which he behold not, and he, wait a minute, the, um, them by the Spirit of God, and 
their numbers were great, even numberless as the sand upon the seashore. And he behold many lands, and each land was called earth, and were in here on the face thereof thirty. And it came to pass that Moses called upon God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, why thee things are so, and by what thou Oh, me, uh, I just dropped a pen, me and them. So I want to highlight, oops, number 29 through 30, because I want to revisit those and take some footnotes down the road. 31, and behold, the glory of the Lord was upon Moses, so that Moses stood in presence of God and talked with him face to face. And the Lord said unto Moses, for mine own purpose, have I made these things? Here is wisdom, and it remembereth in me. Okay, that's a good one. That gets a purple little highlighter here. So I'm gonna write here is, I'm gonna highlight here is wisdom. It remembereth in me. This is pretty exciting and cool. I, um, I'm on page four. <laughs> so we've been, um, but I think I'm gonna, oh, we only have a few more till, um, so I'm on verse 32 and the chapter ends on in 10 more verses and chapter two uh, begins. So I'm gonna finish it through um, uh, the end of chapter one here. Okay, and 32. And by the word of my power have I created them which is mine, only begotten son who is full of grace and trust. And words without numbers have I created, and I also created them for my own purpose. And by the son, I created them, which is mine only begotten. And the first man of all men have I called Adam, which is many, but only an ancient of this earth and the inhabitants thereof give I unto you, for behold, there are many words that have passed away by the word of my power. And there are many <clears throat> that now stand and number are, are thou unto man, but all things are numbered unto me, for they are mine and I know them. And it came to pass that Moses speak unto the Lord, saying, Be merciful unto thee, servant, O God, and tell me concerning the earth and the inhabitants thereof, and also the heavens, and then thy servant will be content. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, The heavens, they are many, and they cannot be numbered unto man, but they are numbered unto me, for they are mine. You know, I like that it says in here, whoops, there's a lot of whoops when I'm reading out loud here on live. Uh, I like where it says, um, I'm going to highlight, and the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, the heavens, okay, I, this is what I like. The heavens, they are many, and they cannot be numbered. The 
heavens. They are many, but they cannot be numbered unto man, but they are numbered unto me. They are numbered unto me, for they are mine. Now, this reminds me of the different levels of the celestial kingdom. Because God right here is telling Moses that there are many heavens. Oh, that's just my perception of this. If you have a different view, um, by all means, please, we can learn together. Number 38, and as one earth shall pass away, and the heavens thereof, even so shall another come, and there is no end to my work, neither to my words. That's powerful. 39, for behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Oh, get another. I'm just dropping things left and right down there. Um, okay, so this gets highlighted. To bring, I'm gonna, to bring is what I'm going to highlight. To pass um, immortality and eternal life of man. Okay. 40. And now, Moses, my son, I will speak unto thee concerning this earth upon which thou um, standest, and thou shalt write the things which I shall speak. And in a day when the children of men shall esteem my words as, and take many of them from the book with which thou shall write. Behold, I will raise up another like unto thee, and they shall be had again among the children of men, among as many as shall believe. 42. These words were spoken unto Moses, in the mount, the name of which shall not be known among the children of men, and now they are spoken unto you. Show them not unto any, except them that believe, even so. Amen. So I am going to get another marker. I'm going to make a note because I like verse 42, the end here. And I am going to revisit that when I pray and ponder. So we have just read the first chapter of Moses in the Pearl of Great Price along with the introduction. And we are on page five, the, the beginning of chapter two. And I just felt inspired to come on and share this with you tonight, today, this morning. It's only, I'm like, whatever it is, it's 8.36 a.m. Not too bad for a few minutes of scripture study. So I want to get to your, um, oh, um, have you changed your face? Um, Mama's little helpers, my friend Angela, she changed her profile picture. I didn't recognize her almost. So let me see if there's any questions from you guys as we finished chapter one in the Pearl of Great Price. Um, okay. Don't have any questions, actually. Let's see. Had a lot of people coming and going, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Whoopsie daisy. What did I do? Oh, my friend C A R I. And a dot says, thank you for sharing. I needed this. I am glad. Hey, my friend from England is on. Holler, Maureen. And let's see who else. Oh, Maureen says, 
it is um 1600 hours here and yeah so it's it's um yeah because there's seven hours between utah and um yeah that's that's cool so and then maureen um yeah so that's i just love um db mama i love your new profile picture <laughs> It's so tiny, but it looks good. So, well, um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. And I'm going to go and start my day, but I appreciate you joining me for reading um, in the Pearl of Great Price today. And let's see, maybe tomorrow morning I'll get up and uh, we can read Chapter 2 and go from there. Sandy, thank you. I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.